You know, I gotta admit, the old car's growing on me a lot. So if you didn't see the last video, we finally took this thing down the road for the first actual drive with it, and it didn't really go as planned. Uh, we made it about six miles, and then the car shut off and wouldn't fire back up. And I'll be honest, I was very nervous thinking that maybe I heard it. I didn't think that I actually heard it because it never lost oil pressure, never got hot. Uh, it just kind of shut off. But me being a nervous little Nancy, I was very concerned that something in the motor was eating itself and uh, it just wasn't happy. Luckily, I did figure it out. Yeah. Now, what I said I thought it was at the time was uh, it wasn't charging. And it turns out it wasn't charging. And something that I learned after getting it back here, this thing actually does have an alternator gauge. It is right up there. For whatever reason, like I noticed that it said volts, I just thought it wasn't working and I noticed after we got it back here, it was working. And uh, I threw a second battery in it, the one out of the Monte Carlo, and it fired right up, which is awesome, but it was only at like 12 volts. So gotta figure out what's going on with that. And uh, I really need to change the seating position. I don't know if we'll get to that today. Hood off, it's so nice being able to easily pop that thing off by myself. Yeah, there's definitely some changes I want to make to this thing. But I don't know if now is the time to do it. I I absolutely need to do something about the wiring. So let's see if I can get this hatch popped open. Nice little universal key. I got the battery tester on it. You can see this battery is okay. Load on it, still good. So now we're going to fire this bad girl up. Let's roll it, make sure she's in park. Okay. Will this thing just fire up like this? I doubt it. These damn carburetors. <laughs> Give it a couple little squirts. I'm just gonna have to freaking get in the thing. All right, pump, pump, pump it up. I don't know, man. That's very weird. So it is charging. I mean, you saw the gauge. The batteries are getting like 14.7 or whatever volts. But the gauge at the dash is only saying like 12.8 or whatever, 12.5. That's, huh. I guess it's, I guess it's just wherever that gauge is hooked into. It, I don't know, man. The joy of uh, new cars, I guess. I'll figure that out another time. Right now, I feel like it's a good time to share the history of the car. Because uh, Brandon, the guy who owned it before the guy I bought it from, uh, the one who actually like put the car together, um, he got a hold of me. And he was like, hey, I know a bunch of the history of that car. Uh, when you get a chance, call me. So I called him. We talked for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so and uh, he just gave me a rundown of the car and it was pretty fascinating so I figured it'd be an entertaining video. So to start at the beginning he said he bought it with the chassis already put together. I want to say 
that he told me he saw it sitting for a while. And uh, the guy he bought it from built the chassis and everything, and he used to race it a bunch over on uh, the east side of the state. And when he bought it, he said uh, one of the last times the guy had it out, he lost it and actually hit both walls with the car. So these quarters were caved in a bunch. And he said uh, when he first bought the car, he had to pop those out a bunch and fiberglass and bondo it to make it look pretty good. And I'll say it looks pretty good. Like, you can see that they're a little wavy, but I would have never thought that it hit both walls at um, whatever track he said. I don't know if he said a track, but he said <laughs> he lost it, hit one wall, overcorrected, went over, hit the other wall. I mean, all things considered, the car looks pretty good. But yeah, there's fiberglass and Bondo here, which I knew that there was Bondo because I can see this crack. So he bought the car from the dude that built the chassis and everything. Uh, he never said how fast it went. I'm imagining uh, probably like low 12s, high 11s, give or take. So he bought the car and fixed the fenders and everything. And uh, he painted it this robin egg blue is what it actually is. And then he said he built this engine with mostly uh, leftover parts. So it is a 327 that's bored 30 over. So it's a 331 cast internals, flat top pistons with four valve reliefs. Uh, he didn't say if he had it decked or anything like that. I'm just going to assume not. He probably just had the bores cleaned up when he went 30 over. But yeah, he said cast internals. So it's a, a fairly budget built small block. So I have talked, I'll own up to it. I've talked a lot of shit about the comp thumper cam. I've called it a car show cam. I said it makes basically no power. It's all about sound. And uh, for the most part, I still believe that. I think it's, you don't care about how the car performs. You just want it to sound real rowdy. And I still stand by that. So if you have a thumper cam, don't take it personally. That's just my opinion. But that's the cam that's in this. So when we were saying, man, that thing sounds pretty rowdy. Well, yeah, it's supposed to. So when he said that, I, I couldn't help but kind of chuckle to myself that it's like, what comes around is all around. <laughs> I mean, we already know Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake. And uh, he said when he had it, it had a 650 carb, I believe. The thing about the heads, though, is uh, I'm not going to name any names. So hopefully nobody gets in trouble. I kind of imagine that any statue of limitations is up. So I don't know. The story goes that these are an experimental head. You can see the World Products W there. They are aluminum, and uh, the story goes that there was three sets of test heads made, and then they were all supposed to be destroyed. One of his buddies worked, I think he said worked at the place that was supposed to destroy them or something like that, and the engine that was to be destroyed, uh, two of the sets got destroyed, and then he kept this third set. And they were just sitting on the shelf at his buddy's place for years, I guess. And uh, when he was putting this 327 together, his buddy was like, man, these heads would be sweet on it. And he's like, well, I mean, they're one of one, basically, so you're probably going to want an arm and a leg for it. They ended up trading a bunch of stuff, and Bob's your uncle. The heads are on the engine. So I don't know what size valves. I don't know what size chambers. I don't know the runners, anything like that. I only know that they are a World Products experimental head. I did have the valve covers off and I looked at the part numbers. Nothing came up. And they have like this kind of weird webbing that comes off the rocker bolt mounts. You know what I mean? Like normally, well, I can show you. Like here, how there's kind of like that webbing. Those heads have it in an X off every stud mount, which... I don't know, maybe there's some heads out there that have those. I, I'll be honest, I haven't done a ton of research on all small block Chevy heads, so that might be common now. No idea. But, um, yeah, all I know about them is that they're aluminum, they were made by World Products, and uh, that's it. <laughs> it's kind of uh, like a, a spare parts 327 that seems to run pretty good. I mean... The car with me in is 2950, so it doesn't have to move a crazy amount of weight. But, which, to be honest, after looking at the car, I think with me in it, we could get it below 28. 
I really do. Like there's a lot of weight that could be pulled out of this thing. And then the turbo 350 that's in it, he said was in it when he bought the car. So uh, he just figured run it, see how it does. And like I said in the last video, it seems to do pretty good. I wish it had a trans brake and maybe a higher stall because I feel like it's like a 2800 stall or so. Um, but yeah, it, it seems to do pretty good. It's a fun car. It's a handful to drive because, you know, big tires, uh, ladder bars, the things. It handles like a wet mattress. <laughs> he bought the car, put it together uh, for his wife, and they had it out three times making just street passes. And uh, it was more than she was comfortable with, which... <laughs> After driving it, I totally understand. <laughs> this thing, it, it's... It's a handful. Like, it's not something, like, crazy fast. Let's not get it twisted. It, I truly believe right now it's, like, a 1220 to 1190 car. But it's just... It's all over the place. It's squirrely. It's not really squirrely. It's just, it sways so much. Like, if you've ever driven on slicks, you know what I'm talking about. You feel like you're doing a burnout when you're going 30 miles an hour. It's just very uncomfortable the first few times. You'd probably have to drive this car like 30, 40 times to, well, maybe not that many, but you'd have to drive the car a lot to get real comfortable with it. To where like James Brown over there, that car's pretty much all intact. Like it, it, the rear end isn't cut up or anything like that. So it's it's super stable. Even with when I have the slicks on it, it's still, it, it doesn't shimmy around a whole bunch. It, it's, a, it, it's a pretty solid car, you know what I mean? To where this thing, it's been it's been cut up, it's been beat on, it's been put in the wall. So it, it's uh, it's an old back half pro street car. And I just want to be clear, I'm not talking shit about anybody or anything like that. I think it's just, like, we all know what the car is. It's got a ton of potential. It, it truly does. But uh, there's just a bunch of bugs to work out of it. And I just thought it had a real interesting history. I thought it was real cool. I thought it was real amusing that in one pass it hit both walls. I really wish there was a video of that somewhere. That'd be cool to see. And uh, I'm one of those people that when I know the car has an interesting history, I just like it more. So like before that phone call with them, I was like, man, I don't know. I might get rid of it. It's kind of whatever. And then just like getting more familiar with the car, I, I appreciate it a lot more. I think it's just, it's a lot cooler. So that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little stroll down uh, memory lane, I guess. <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. I'll see you next time.